What's going on, Birdies and Bourbon fan? Merry Christmas Eve to you all. I apologize, I'm getting this late to you. I'm here to build a nog for you. We are gonna start with the Jeffrey Morgenthaler sort of ish version of things. And basically what that means to me is we're gonna keep things really simple. We're gonna go with a sherry and a tequila. We're gonna do equal proportions of our sherry and tequila, but first we're gonna crack the whole egg. We're not gonna buy the store eggnog stuff. We're just gonna go ahead and crack the whole egg, yolk and all. Into that egg, I'm now going to pour a little bit of soy vanilla milk. Now we're squarely off of Jeffrey Morgan Dollar's version at this point, and we're just doing our own thing. So we got a little vanilla soy milk, give it a little flavor, uh, keep things a little easier in the digestive system, although whatever benefit we have, we're gonna then do with our heavy dairy cream. I'm gonna pour just about a quarter ounce, maybe a third ounce of that into here. And this is sort of to taste in terms of how creamy you want it to be. So there's really no wrong answer. Um, our soy milk, I'm gonna go ahead and do an ounce and a half of that. And you can use regular milk if you'd like to. Um, you know, you'll get a little bit of a flavor differential with the, the vanilla, but it's pretty much the same. I'm gonna throw a bit of aged maple syrup in here. Now this is actually a crown aged maple syrup that I got from Costco, but really you can use any aged maple syrup. It's gonna sweeten it a little bit and just sort of give it a little bit more of a rounded holiday flavor. And I'm gonna do just a third ounce of that as well. Now it's time for the booze. So we're gonna use an aged tequila. I'm trying to put the calf on a syrup and it's not working. Uh, we're gonna use an aged tequila. It's a Costco variety. Uh, it's 20 bucks for a liter and it's actually pretty darn tasty. So I would recommend this if you're mixing cocktails. Um, you can sip this if you want, but it's, you know, for 20 bucks, it's definitely not a bad mixer. So I'm going to go an ounce of this. And then I'm going to go with an ounce and a half of my Lusau Sherry. Now, there's a lot of sherries in the market, and if you're not in the sherry game, uh, my suggestion to you is either to go with this guy right here, which is called East India Solera Sherry, which is a little bit of a fancier sherry. It runs about 25, 30 bucks a bottle. But honestly, you can get away with just an Amontillado sherry. Um, there's a whole range of sherries out there, and I'm not gonna get into the whole structure of sherry. Um, but an Amontillado is sort of right down the middle. It's gonna give you a little bit of nuttiness, a little bit of the um, sort of darker aged flavor of things, which I find to be uh, pretty helpful when you're mixing cocktails. So I've got an ounce and a half in there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually use something called a dry shake. So if you're a cocktail person, you'll be quite familiar with this. But if not, basically what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to whip all of this together with no ice. And that's what a dry shake means. The reason for that is we have an egg in there. And if we put ice in there right now, we're only going to be able to shake it a certain amount of times before we start diluting things. And also when we ice things down, it's going to be a little bit harder to incorporate things into um, the cocktail. So if we have ice in there, it's going to be a little bit harder with the yolk. Uh, and actually the whole egg to actually become incorporated with the drink. So we're just gonna be dry shake it for a little bit. And I'm gonna probably go a little faster than I normally would just so we don't have this video go on forever. But I just like to sort of hit it as hard as you can. And really I'd probably go on, if you're, you know, you got raw egg in here, I'd probably go a solid minute unless you feel uh, more comfortable with things being a little bit more raw. So I might go just a little bit lighter this time just for the sake of the video but I'm gonna get it nice and good. One trick is with this kind of shaker tin, but really any of them, when you open this up after shaking a cocktail with egg in it, you're gonna have some gas, some air in there, and it's gonna to wanna to sort of pop open. So I would go ahead and open this over a sink, which I'm gonna do here, and sort of hold on to it. And once I've sort of let that air out, I'm gonna open it over here, and then gonna add ice right here. I'm gonna give it another shake. And again, it might take a little longer and experiment with how uh, iced down you want your cocktail to be. But for the sake of the video, we're going to go more quick. I'm going to pour it into any kind of cocktail coupe right here. My sort of messy one because I 
let a little, little of the nog out earlier. So once I've poured this in, actually one thing I would actually recommend doing that I didn't do this time is take a fine tea strainer and then go ahead and um, shake it, or I'm sorry, pour it through this. And what that's going to do is that's going to get any little pieces of ice shard, but also little bits and pieces of egg that you might not want in there into your glass. I don't think it's a big deal if you don't mind uh, it being a little bit more thick. I think there's nothing wrong with it. Final thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take a nutmeg shaker or grinder. I just have some whole egg, uh, nutmeg in there. If you have just a regular ground nutmeg, that's fine too. You can't see it down here, but I'm just going to grind a little bit of nutmeg on top. I find that that finishes things well. It's obviously traditional, and also when you're dealing with egg and cream-based drinks, sometimes the odor that that gives off from a cocktail perspective is not what you want. The flavor is great, but the odor, it may smell a little eggy. And so what the nutmeg does, it sort of covers that up and allows you to, to smell something that's a little bit better. Anyway, Birdies and Burbs fans, uh, here's to a happy Christmas, a happy new year, and hopefully more cocktail recipes. See ya.